Right guys, I'm guessing if you've clicked on the uh, on the video, you know why we're here. This is the Spectrum DX6i um, that's been used in the range uh, performance videos. And uh, I'm going to try to show you quickly how easy it is to perform this modification. I'll just rotate that there so you can see how neat that is on the top um, of the DX6i. Uh, if you were sitting FPV in with the radio flat like this, you would be getting a fantastic signal all around that aerial. The only place that you might have some issues is directly above it. Um, but that would only be at distance and you would regain control um, once you got close. Uh, sort of 200 feet, something like that. Um, I was assured today. So let's get straight into this. Um, take your DX6i and remove the six screws that are on the back of the radio here, 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 and two up in the neck right at the top. Let's just move that in a shot a little more for you. These two at the top. Right, I'm going to do that and then I'll see you at the next stage. I'm just going to open up uh, the dx 6 side now and if I put it in that orientation um, no. sorry guys, just uh, trying to do it so you can see exactly what we've got here um, let's pull that around right, in here um, when you take yours apart, this will be fitted up here and this will be fitted in here. Um, and basically there is a screw in the end of this piece up here. Just undo that screw and then slide it out and all this will come apart. And there's like a little metal collar. There you go, just a little Phillips head metal collar. That comes out of there. Uh, that enables you to slide this piece out and then take that off. Now, as with the RX video, there's a UFL connector on the end of here. Simply just pop off that UFL connector. Uh, before you fit um, this uh, UFL to SMA or RPSMA, depending on what you're doing, um, you want to drill a hole like I have next to the uh, the handle. There's plenty of room there. Um, there's absolutely nothing going on the inside other than just a little um, sort of bolt. Uh, and there we go, pop your UFL connector on, do up the nut so it's nice and secure. You could put a little dab of um, a thread locker on there if you wanted, just to make sure this didn't come undone. Pop your UFL connector on and then literally Pop it back together. Just make sure that there's no binding on your sticks, nothing's got jammed. Check your gaps, make sure your gaps look okay, and then replace your screws. Now, we have a three, lay, a three leaf clover aerial antenna on there, um, which you may want to use or you may not want to use. Um, the shape of this antenna gives it a very uh, a good agile signal transmission and having the skew on your model, whereas that, I've got this here to one side, and it's still actually on the test rig, um, having that skew antenna on your model means that even if the model banks, you're still going to get a really nice signal because of these um, armatures on the aerial on the antenna so that's what makes this a really really good aerial or antenna to use for this kind of thing however you may not want that kind of aerial on your transmitter with well, the beauty of having this uh, this setup now if I'm just try to do this in shot for you again guys I've only just started doing this desktop stuff, so please forgive me if it's a bit Heath Robinson. So, 
you may not want to use a skew planner this may be a little bit too fragile you don't really want it on your radio um, for whatever reason so now to one side here courtesy of technic.co.uk we have a high gain because you've now got your RPSMA or SMA um, connector now on the top there you can change aerials very easily so you could put that aerial up on top of the DX6i like that now that's a lot sort of cleaner um, and looks a lot more in keeping with the original you can also if you like you could have it rotated that way and you could still have your uh, your aerial um, your standard aerial fitted if you preferred that um, the look of it aesthetically um, or you could just cap this off not a problem now that takes us up to the uh, the second part of the um, the the modification video that so we're, we're, at, we're now at a place where we're at the second part uh, in the video there is one more step what I'm going to do first though is I'm going to take the the test rig out I'm going to go to one of my uh, sort of local areas that gives me good line of sight uh, I'm also going to get behind some trees and stuff as well so we can see how this does cope but um, to give it the best chance we're going to take the test rig out uh, to somewhere that gives me a good range and we're going to test this full range so we can actually see how far we can get with the DX6i with both antenna setups um, with this high gain antenna and with the three leaf clover and we're also going to see how um, they, the, uh, they react with uh, can in the radio over and uh, sort of incorrectly positioning the antenna see which one's sort of the more robust system now not a lot of people know this but uh, in the power settings you can actually adjust the power of the DX6i now you've got three choices um, you've got EU You've got France, EU, and you've got the rest of the world, or US. It's actually listed as US on here, but I'm pretty sure it is mainly direct, you know, pretty much the rest of the world. Now that's three different power settings. Now I don't know what uh, the French setting is, but I believe it's the lowest. The UK setting is 100 milliwatts but the US setting is 200 milliwatts. So if you're in the United States and you receive your radio, you may find that it's set to the French or the, U, uh, the EU setting. So you'll be using your DX6i at half of its capable power. So straight away, you can double the amount of uh, milliwatts available to yourselves for our testing we're going to keep it in the eu mode because i'm in the uk and we're in europe so that's what i'm going to do but um it should still give us very very good uh results with it in the eu mode i may do a test in the us mode just to see how much more it will give us although we're increasing the power by double that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get double the distance. However, we should see some increase. Right, um, all you need to perform these modifications, the one on the, the receiver and the one on this radio, is this little piece here. Now, they're about two quid on eBay, which is about three dollars. Um, it's a UFL to SMA or UFL to RP SMA depending on what you're going to be putting what type of aerial connection you're going to be putting on um, but if you get the wrong one it doesn't matter um, you may have noticed I had adapters on uh, today to adapt from 
um, SMA to RPSMA because I had a bit of a mismatch. Um, you will lose a tiny little bit of signal by you putting a, a, an adapter in there, but it's, it really isn't a big deal. Um, so that kind of takes us up, that's the modifications covered. I hope this is something that you'll find useful. Stay tuned, I am going to be testing all this kit so that you can see uh, the games that um, have been uh, um, sort of attained by making this modification. Now in the range testing videos we did have an 18% gain which isn't you know, incredible but we haven't increased the power of the transmitter we haven't made it an illegal unit or anything like that. All we've literally done is taken a few items, got bought one of the Hobby King receivers um, that's got a UFL in there. The reason we, the only reason we bought the Hobby King receivers, well, the reasons that we bought the Hobby King receivers is a they are very well thought of. Um, Bruce from RC Model Reviews reviewed these recently and found them to be very good. Um, uh, the these antennas uh, are widely used for 2.4 gigahertz video and the reason they're used is because they're a very good antenna and this is just a signal it doesn't matter whether it's video or control it's just a signal so they'll work just as well um, with the control link so once we've done that and we've gone out we're going to have a little bit of fun and this is mainly for you guys that are abroad on I'm not um, suggesting that anybody does this um, in France or in the EU areas um, but from uh, technic.co.uk this is the 2 watt booster for the DJI Phantom um, it's a video booster but as I just said a signal is a signal now this will boost your 100 milliwatts or 200 milliwatts up to they're saying it's rated at two watts so 20 times the uk power now it doesn't mean we'll get 20 times further because that's not how this kind of signal works but we could see a big big gain in distance um, uh, and I'm not going to guess uh, at what that can be because it could be wrong. Now these are about um, 45 quid. Uh, it's 45 UK pounds. Sorry for my Cockney. There, it's about 45 UK pounds. It comes with a JST connector. Um, it'll run between about three and a half and about five and a half volts. So a one cell lithium polymer would be perfect for this. You don't have to put anything on the radio, uh, in the radio at all. You've already made your um, your SMA uh, adapter that is now already built into your radio system. Let's just try to get that where you can see it. We screw on our adapter. Just make sure that is the right one. Yes, it is. Screw your adapter together like this. Um, I'm guessing we would have that face in the back because that is probably sorry guys just getting in the shot for you maybe if I lay it down that would be better we'll have that facing to the back there because I'm guessing you're going to velcro a, um, a 3.7 volt lithium polymer to the back of the, the radio because they run about 4.5 4.2 volts something like that when they're fully charged and then this high gain antenna goes on on the top of there like so so like I say I'm not suggesting anybody does this in the European regions but this is an option for you guys out there um, you may not get thanked by your other friends using 2.4 but if you was to go out somewhere um, you know, miles away from anywhere, you was at the coast and you was on your own and you wanted to get some footage and you wanted a really, really robust control link, boosting it up to two watts like this could really, really get you some serious range. Um, so that is another option that we're going to look at. I'm going to finish with the sort of UK legal version first and we'll range check that and see what we can get from that. And then when I've done that, 
I will then check um, to see what kind of range we can get from using the 2.4 gigahertz 2 watt signal booster that is used for the video link on the DJI Phantoms. It's going to be a really, really easy thing to do now that we've got our connector built into our radio. So I'm sorry if I've rambled on a little bit, guys. I've had a cold the last couple of days and I've uh, been feeling a bit rough, but I really did want to get these videos out there um, for you. I'd like to say thank you very much to, um, uh, to technic.co.uk um, for helping us out. They've I've been on the phone. I purchased these aerials a couple of days ago and he saw what I was doing and very kindly sent me this one down to test um, and I'm, I'm going to enjoy playing with that so um, I will literally get out in the field with it I'm going to strap it to the radio we'll take it out and whatever it does guys is what it does and you'll be there to see that so thanks very much for watching this episode I'm Mount Barnard for RCTV UK signing off bye for now